Hello and welcome to another edition of the Power BI Monthly Digest. This month is the month of March. Yes, my name is, is <laughs> my name is Devin Knight. I'm here with Matt Peterson. And uh, we are here, of course, to share you, with you some of our favorite things that have been released more recently with Power BI. And uh, so, Matt, there was not not a huge month of updates, but some good stuff still. Yeah, yeah, not a huge month. Uh, we got some updates to the Azure Map Visual. Uh, we have some DAX updates. That's really the one I'm the most excited about. Yeah. That's the one we're going to cover at the end. Uh, and then just a few other little visual updates pretty much is what we've got. Awesome. Sounds good. Well, so the first thing you mentioned there was Azure Maps. So Azure Maps are fairly new. I think they've been around for several yeah, months Yeah, they now came out towards the uh, the end of last summer. Yeah. Uh, and with Azure Maps, it's a great map visual. But there is that one caveat. You have to have latitude and longitude data in order to use it. So as long as you have that, that's always the map visual I find myself going towards because yeah. of all the extra capabilities. Cool. So what's new with Azure Map this month? So now just um, selection of different data points on there uh, that they allow you to do a little bit more user friendly, as well as some really cool, unique features about drive time and distance from Ooh. a certain location. Awesome. Let's yeah. check it out. Yeah. So with this Azure Map visual, what's really neat about it, if you've never used it before, like let's just take a look here. I've got some failed banks uh, along with the cities and the states that they belong in. So if I come on over here and click on Florida, I got some great things going on here once it actually does its rendering. And I just have little column charts, little bars that are showing the, the amounts of failed banks in these individual cities. And if you never used Azure Maps again, you got a little traffic thing, like you could hit show traffic and it would actually do that. We're not going to do that today, though, because I want to talk about the new feature. And the new feature is if we come over here where we have our select mode, we have four different selection modes and we're going to save the best one for last. At least one I think that's the, the neatest. Uh, so we're going to come over here and pick our circle selection. So I have the circle selection selected. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. And now what I'm going to do is simply drag and drop around an area to select a certain portion of my map. So as I'm dragging and dropping, we got that yellow highlight. And now notice, keep an eye on that Florida 73 number over on the right hand side. Now it changes to 19. Now one of the things it does do is it zooms out on you every time that you make this selection. So you do have to come on over uh, and zoom back in. So that's the circle selection. Well, what other selections do we have available to us? We have the rectangle selection as well. Ooh. And with the rectangle selection, and once we click on it here, we'll zoom on out. We'll go to somewhere new. Let's go over here. So again, I'm just simply dragging and dropping. And now we can see that I've dragged Georgia, Florida, Alabama, and Tennessee. And finally, the last shape that we can use with this is the polygon shape. So we'll this is zoom. Cool. I like yeah, I think the polygon ones can give a little bit more um, user flexibility. So if I come and I just start, and I just do single clicks. And as you can see, it starts to draw where I'm at. And I'll zoom in here a little bit more too. So we can come on up over here. And then every time you just draw a new part, it's just going to keep making it bigger and bigger. And then once you're done with that, you need to come on the inside of your yellow and do a double click. Okay. And when you do the double click, it gets rid of what you, it don't, no longer shows that yellow and it keeps what was actually within your oh, rectangle. Okay. <clears throat> Very cool. Very yeah. Cool. But now let's talk about the coolest feature, at least the one I think is. We're going to come over here and click on our range selection. So with the range selection, what it's going to allow you to do is you're going to drag a marker. So I got to find where they put my marker. And actually, let me come out here and let me zoom out just a little bit. And then for our range selection, we can pick a distance or we can pick a time from a certain location. So again, that range selection did not pop out at me just right away. So let me zoom out just a little bit further here. There it is. Okay. There we go. Now that's popping up here. It might have been hidden behind this little window. So we'll go, you know, we're up here in Jacksonville. So let's talk about Jacksonville. And we're going to say we want to look at a distance 200 miles within this location. We simply click on search. Oh, that's And it really does cool. it for us. Also, if you don't want to do it in terms of distance, you can also choose instead a timeline, as in driving. So average time drive. So I don't know how they figured out. Uh, the average uh, speed of people, whether you're a speeder <laughs> or not. But um, I know that my house to get to back where I'm from in Winter Haven takes about three hours. So I'll put in 180 here. 
Let's see if, uh, according to how I normally drive, that would put me in there. Yep, right down here near the Orlando Kissimmee area. Wow. So That's really cool. Yeah, it's pretty neat. I could definitely see where they would, like, if you were doing, like, retail shopping in stores um, or medical information, like ER visits, etc., yeah. that you're looking for certain locations and drive times, uh, you could get some good data analytics out of it. Yeah, I have so much time to actually visit my, my clients. What's within range of where I'm at now? I can kind of plug in the time there and figure figure that out. That's pretty cool. All right, so really cool feature. The maps I'm excited about. I think the, the drive time thing is a really cool feature there. Yeah. Um, we have a couple other visualization additions or, or new features to existing visuals. So the first one we're going to look at is uh, an addition of small multiples, right? We learned about that recently. Yeah, there's small multiples. They've added one extra formatting feature. They got some feedback that the titles of the small multiples uh, sometimes we're getting truncated off. Okay. So in the word wrap feature wasn't part of uh, formatting, but now that so now you can word wrap it. Uh, so that way you get to see the full title of all of your uh, small multiples. And that particular feature is still in preview, right? Yeah, still in preview. Okay. Yeah, still in preview. And then while, while we're there, we'll go ahead and look at another feature, which is a constant line, right? So constant lines already exist within some visuals, but what's the change? What's new about it? Well, you used to only have the Y constant line. Okay. Now you can have an X constant line, wow. uh, and you can have multiple ones. And the, the only limitation, because it makes sense, is that it's got to be either date, time, um, dates or times or numeric values. Yeah, that makes sense. And then sense. you can add them into it. That makes sense. All right, well, let's take a look at these couple features. So as you can see here in our small multiples, we've got our sales amount by calendar year and country. And the reason it says by country is because within this visual, we have added the sales territory country in this new feature called small multiples. So now it's going to give us the actual values of the small multiples that we see here. Now, none of mine currently are very long, so word wrap really isn't a big deal, but we're going to show you that in just a second. So in order to turn the word wrap on, you're going to go into your formatting section, and under the small multiple title, you now can come on over at the very bottom and turn word wrap from off to on. And so if I take this now and I would... You know, I, this is one whole page, but if I needed some extra space here and I decided to make this smaller, when I come on over and we bring it over here, so now we're getting a little bit smaller. And as we can see, my United Kingdom and my United States now have been word wrapped, which prior to this month, uh, it would have just truncated it off. Uh, now, the only they say limitations, things to think about is because now that there is word wrap, we now have extra white space under the ones that do not need the word wrap. So you are going to make them a little bit more elongated. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And then so that tells it. So the next one was uh, around the line chart, right? Yeah. So in our line chart, uh, in order to put in an X constant line, uh, you're going to do it the same way that you would put in a Y constant line. So you have to come over with your visual selected. You're going to have to come into your analytics section. And then this is the new update, the x-axis constant line. And so we come on down, and let me come back on over to the top, and we're going to click on Add. So we're going to add in an x-axis constant line. Uh, we're going to do a value uh, because I have dates on here. That is what is defaulting to. So we're going to make sure that it makes sense with the data that we're looking at. We're going to back this up into 2008. And we'll go like with May 13th. And as we can see, we now have the x uh, axis constant line. We can change the line color, the style, all the things that you could do with your y's, you can do here with x. And you can have multiple. Uh, so this would, you know, be good if you, you were looking at a specific time period and you wanted your end user to, you know, really focus their attention on something, but still be able to see that outside data. Yeah. Uh, you could kind of put like these starting and ending points here. So yeah, a lot of people right now I know are analyzing things like COVID-19 data. You could have kind of the beginning of a, uh, a surge in, in cases and kind of the end of a surge. You can kind of really kind of analyze between dates here uh, rather easily. Nice. Very yeah. nice. Cool. All right. So the next thing that we're going to be looking at is some new DAX features. So you, you were excited about, right? Yeah, I was really excited about the There's uh, two new ones. Um, the uh, the first one is if dot eager, okay. uh, which is going to give you the same results as if. So you're not going to get different answers. However, in some use case scenarios, the if dot eager because it evaluates all three parameters rather than just doing the first check and only going to true or only going to the false. 
um, it will evaluate three. And in some unique situations, it actually improves the performance of your report. Okay. Uh, now, the way that I would test that on my own uh, is, you know, we could use the performance analyzer right. in Power BI and then actually put those two different if statements, bring them into a visual, see which one is going better. Uh, or we could even use that studio yeah. if we wanted to. Makes sense. Uh, then the other one, though, is I think better that we're going to talk about. Okay. Calculate. Uh, I don't know of any Power BI user who has not come across Calculate and has to use it. Yeah. And uh, prior to this one that we're about to see, there would be a code that you would put in. Like, let's say I wanted to, we're going to show in the demonstration, I wanted to return the profits for just Canada and Australia. Um, and I want because I want to compare those two to everybody else. Right. Well, when you reference two columns in a calculate and you wanted it to equal two certain values, it would say, uh, -uh no good. Uh, so then you had to do some extra DAX. You then said, had to say, OK, we'll bring back the entire table, then filter that table based on these two values. Yeah. So the all uh, the filter, all command, et cetera. Now you don't have to do that anymore. So for especially people who are new to DAX, I think this is going to be a, a big improvement where they don't have to go and learn some extra things on the side. That's awesome. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. I like it. Let's check it out. Yeah. So just to prove that the the new if statement actually works, uh, we made a calculated uh, column over here. So as we currently see, we're making a dependence column based on children. And so we're saying, hey, check out the customer total children column. If it's greater than zero, that means they have dependents. If not, it's no, and we can see that none of these people have children currently, so they're all going to no. The new function is if dot eager, okay? And this uses the eager execution plan. So when we bring it on over, just to prove that you get the same results and that we're not lying to you, we still keep these no's right here to start off with. All right, so again, it's just a new way of writing it, um, and feel free to test that out. And essentially, like you said, it's just evaluating both the true and the false nature of the, the execution ahead of time rather than doing it based on individual results. Exactly. Okay. That's exactly correct. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So that's interesting. Maybe there's some use cases where that one comes out to, to be the, the winner as far as performance. So tell us about the, the second one here. So the calculate update. Yeah, this one I'm really the excited calculate about. update. So let's take a, a look at this table. So we currently, when you when you do your measure, this is being filtered down based on uh, our different sales territory countries. So this is our filter context here. And so if I wanted to always return Australia and Canada's sum, and I want to compare it to individual countries, I have to override this filter, which is where Calculate comes in. Now, where we run into the actual issue, and let me pull this one up, is the old way of doing this, thus I called it the old way, is that because we have two different sales territories where it can equal Australia or it can equal Canada, we had to come over and put in a filter on a table. And we had to okay. bring back the entire table so we don't let it get filtered down by the sales territory country. Then we filter it manually of what we always want it to be filtered by. And you only had to do it this way because you had two columns, Exactly. Right? Okay. Only because I had two columns. If it was just one, if it was just for Canada... Um, I would be good with just sales territory country equals Canada. Right. Uh, however, with this update in March, we now can do this the more standard way of how we would have done it with just one column. So now we're actually able to do what, you know, is, you know, logical. We can say equals Australia or it is equal to Canada. Wow. And this works with and statements as well uh, and multiple or statements. So. Uh, it's just an easier way to write it, uh, yeah. and I just think that it's a, you it's know more logical to me too. Like, right we, now, if you only had to do it this way for one column, why now did I have to do it a different way for multiple columns? This way makes way more sense to me. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. All right, that was a really cool feature. I totally dig the new DAX functions. I know that's one of your favorites as well in there. Uh, we'd love to hear what your favorite is, though. Comment below. Let us know what some of your favorite features were from to, uh, this month's release. And of course, you can always check out our additional training at PragmaticWorks.com. Uh, we'll go ahead and sign off, though. My name is Devin Knight. I'm here with... Matt Peterson. And thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next month. Take care. Have a good one.